Fanny's daddy is in the house. May I approach the witness quickly? Just one. And leaf blower guy just got here, gracing our presence. Perfect timing. Testimony should be to the court. I do. May be seated. Would you please state the spell your full name for the court? My name is John Clifford Floyd the Third. Say good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you tell the court? Are you currently retired? Yes, I am. And uh, prior to being retired, can you tell the court a little bit about? Did you work in the, the legal? I'm, you uh, I was an attorney. I practiced law. I've probably tried a thousand cases. About 50% of my practice was criminal law. That's 25% of it was family law. And the rest was whatever walked through the front door could pay for it. Okay. And governor's come back. He might have I to. Do. My calendar shows it was October 26, 2021. All right. 2021. And would defense counsel accept it as a stipulation? Or is there any follow-up questioning needed on that? Mr. Barnes is still considered under oath on this point. All right. I'm just going to look for a show of hands or for someone to speak now on Zoom and hearing none. Thank you, sir. You're excused. All right. October 26, 2021. Um, 21. Sir, can you tell the court, are you from Atlanta? No, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. I spent most of my legal career, I would say, in Washington, D.C. was kind of the circle, but I've tried cases all over the country, and I tried the longest. I was the first lawyer to try international criminal court. I was with the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. I was in trial there for four and a half years in Arusha, Tanzania, and Hague in the Netherlands. Okay. When you weren't there, it sounds like kind of center of gravity was Washington, D.C. Correct, but I've tried cases in West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, Florida, I mean, California. Yes. yes. And do you, sir, can you tell the court, do you have any children? I have one daughter, Fonnie Willis. Okay. And I want to direct your attention back to 2019, okay? Uh, yes. Back in 2019, can you tell the court, did you move here to Atlanta? I was living in Johannesburg, South, South Africa. And unfortunately, for some reasons, I could not get an extended visa. When I retired from the practice of law in 2018, I moved to South Africa and I had to leave South Africa and I did then come to Atlanta. Okay. And do you, sir, remember about the time period in 2019 when you moved in with your daughter here in Atlanta? It would have been the spring or summer of 2019. And after you moved here, did you get a driver's license to kind of confirm your residency with yeah. Atlanta? Well, my driver's license for the District of Columbia was going to expire on my birthday, which is in October. And yes, I did get a license here in the state of Georgia. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Okay. We'll just take a look at what's been our market state. Today. Okay, Your Honor, would you, if you don't mind, my eyes are very bad, which is one of the reasons I retired, and so I need a magnifying glass, so I'll be Whatever constantly, you thank you. Yeah, I see it was issued on 9 2019 Okay, before we get there, do you recognize State Exhibit 2? Yes, just my driver's license. Okay. And it states Exhibit 2, a fair and accurate copy of your physical driver's license? Absolutely. This time, Your Honor, the state would tender what's been marked as State Exhibit 2 and evidence. Seeing no other objections, it's submitted. State Exhibit 2 there. is submitted for the record. They're going to show us he now, lives at um, the address. And for the record, Your Honor, the state is going to supplement State Exhibit 2 with a redacted copy of the license. The current copy is not redacted with the address and things of that nature. All right. And do we need to mark that differently in any way? I will mark it as State Exhibit 2A. Perfect. Now, you talked about when your driver's license was issued. Can you tell the court when was that driver's license here, your Georgia driver's license issued? It was on 9-28-2019. Okay. So September 28, 2019. Now, when you moved into District Attorney Willis's home. Who lived there? Well, my daughter lived there. I lived there. And from time to time, our grandchildren would come. Okay. And did your grandchildren, were they at school coming and going? As exactly. Uh, I think they were in school in various jurisdictions. And during the time, how long did you live at or with Miss Willis and um, at her home here in Fulton County? She was forced to move after she was elected. About, I mean, I don't know if you want me to go through the whole thing, but that, Your Honor, will indulge me. After she was sworn in, she was sworn in on January 1 of 2021. And on or about the 3rd of February at probably 5.30 a.m. in the morning, there were people outside her house cursing and yelling and calling her the B word and the N word. And just, I mean, it was bizarre. Okay. I mean, it just Sorry, but Mr. Abani, here's the objection to you. He, I would say it's effect on listener. He was present while all of these things were occurring, but I can. No, no, he's saying he was personally present to hear these things. Yes. Okay. Overall. Okay. And Fortunately, the neighbors uh, called the police and disbanded, you know, disbanded the group. And, you know, I hadn't seen anything exactly like it before. After that happened, can you tell the court that Miss Willis would have to move from her home? Yes, she was forced to leave. And can you tell the court after she was forced to leave, shortly after she was sworn in, did you remain at her home in Fulton County? Yes, I stayed there really until 2022, I guess. From what you described, did you fear for her safety? Absolutely. I mean, not only 
did I do that? I mean, the South Fulton police, they brought somebody, a man with a dog, because there have been so many death threats. And they said they were going to blow up the house. They were going to kill her. They were going to kill me. They were going to kill my grandchildren. I mean, on and on and on. But it you just, stayed, uh, didn't you? It became, and I was concerned for her safety. But not yours. After those you stayed. concerns came to your attention and after what you heard and saw that day, you remained at the house? Yes. And can you tell the court with what you just described, why did you remain living at the district attorney's home here in Fulton County? I don't know this relevant. Mr. Bowie. I believe it's relevant based on a lot of the questions that were asked yesterday of Ms. Willis as to about the security threat and the fact that it was implied that those threats were not necessarily real real in the sense yeah, that Mr. He stayed there. Boyd remained in the home. There were many questions about the fact that he remained and her children uh, could still come and go to the house. I think it's relevant based to the testimony that was elicited from defense counsels yesterday. Well, the South Fulton police, first they put a car in front of the house that was there permanently, a police car. That was thing one. Thing two, they brought a person with a dog sometimes more than once a day, twice a day, and they would circle the house to look for bombs. I knew that that was a house that my daughter had worked for. It was a brand new house. She's the only one who had ever lived there. It's a four bedroom, brand new house. And I wanted, somebody needed to protect the house. And I stayed there to basically take care of the house, to take care of the yard. That also somebody sprayed, again, the B word and N word on the house. And I don't think my daughter even knew that. I cleaned it off and called the police and South Fulton police. They have, I'm sure, all the records of all the things that happened. And all of the neighbors, I notified all the neighbors to look out and to watch out. And it was just so crazy. I mean, it was just so crazy. We'd have people would show up in park car. There was a guy parked for probably eight hours out in front of the house, you know, and we'd call the police and, you know. So that was before the Trump indictment. Now, so uh, who, who were those people? Lived there with Miss Willis and even when you remained. So during the time period of 2019 to the end of 2020, are you aware if Miss Willis was dating someone? Yeah, she did. She had a boyfriend when I first got there. And did you meet her boyfriend? Yeah, I met him often. Okay, and can you, did you know him by any specific nickname? Yeah, Deuce. Okay. okay. Deuce was Fanny's other court. boyfriend. While you were living there, how often would you see him? Sometimes every day, sometimes, you know, every other day. He was a disc jockey or something. And he had all this paraphernalia that I'd have to move out. It was a, you know, a thing with the, I mean, uh, things that play music and so forth. So, paraphernalia, so. like drugs? Now, when you moved in in 2019 and then throughout the years in your 2020, 2021, had you ever met someone named Nathan Wade? I did not meet Nathan Wade until 2023, about a year ago when a reporter by the name of Isakoff interviewed me. I met him. That was the first time I had met him. You said that was in 2023? 2023, right. So Fanny was dating someone else in 2019, this guy called and Deuce. I know you said you hadn't met him until 2023, but when you were living at Miss Willis's house in Fulton County, did you ever meet Mr. Wade in the year 2019? Absolutely not. How about in the year 2020? Absolutely not. Did you ever see Mr. Wade, Miss Willis's Fulton County house in the year 2021? Never. You already and said he never went over there. The <laughs> only time or the first time that you met Mr. Wade was in 2023. Let me say something. Mr. Wade said that he remembers seeing me, and I do remember some banter. I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, and there's kind of this thing that goes on between fraternities, and Mr. Wade is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha. So I do remember there was some kind of banter when my daughter was sworn in to be district attorney between me and a couple of guys, and he said he remembers me. I don't remember him. And prior to that experience that you're talking about, uh, as well as, I guess, your official meeting in 2023, had you ever even heard his name? No, never. Yeah, all of this, the question, okay, John. all of this is because they're covering it up, right? Like Fanny and Nathan are covering Ryan, the whole how are you, thing counsel? Up. Good, thank you. Just got a couple questions. On Monday, we heard you were in California. Do you have a place in California? People always ask me about where do I live? I guess I live right here in this seat right now. But yes, the answer is I have a place in Los Angeles. Okay, you do. Do you share time or N split time N between Los Angeles and Georgia? Actually, I'm working on a documentary film and I'm supposed to be being filmed, not for this trial, but I'm supposed to be being filmed right now. It was planned and we had to stop it because they asked me to come here. Sorry for the inconvenience. But um, the answer is I'm working on a documentary and I'll be in California until I finish the documentary if we don't have another actor strike and we don't have an another writer strike. So you own property in California? No, I live with a friend of mine. You live with a friend of yours. Okay. Yeah. And when did you first move? Well, let me qualify with the dates. Did you spend any time in 2019 in California? No. And the reason I didn't is that when I first came here, the answer is no, I did not. What happened was COVID. Once COVID hit that, I mean, I was just paralyzed. I couldn't go anyplace.
plays. I couldn't go anything. I mean, a theater buff. I used to go to theater at least once a week. But when COVID hit, I just didn't go to the dentist, which I need to do. Well, you know, it was just a thing. So I was just stuck. I was just well, stuck there. Lockdown, man. I may be wrong, but I believe COVID hit in 2020. So I was asking about 2019. In 2019, did you spend any time in California? Before COVID was even here in the United States. Remember, I lived in South Africa and I've traveled the world. I knew COVID was coming before. I knew COVID was around before. They may have announced it in 20, but in fact, I knew about it and I knew what was happening in 19. Okay. There was an incident, and I know you've described it. Was that incident on February the 3rd, 2021? That's my best recollection. <laughs> okay. So my question then is, after February 3rd of 2021, how much longer did Miss Willis stay at the house before she moved somewhere else? Very short period of time, and I cannot be precise, but I would bet all the money I ever made, it wouldn't be more than a month and a half, if that long. Okay, so we're talking about, best of your recollection, end of February into the beginning of March, give or take, of 2021, when Miss Willis would have moved to a different location. Exactly. Okay, and did Miss Willis return to the house, that is the house that you were in, at any point in time that you can remember? From time to time, she and her security might show up for her to pick something up or take something, okay. but she always would be come with her security. My question was poorly worded. I apologize. Did she come back permanently to her house? Oh, absolutely not. So as far as you're aware, that once Miss Willis left the house, her house, South Fulton House, so the record's clear, in either late February or into March of 2021, best of your recollection, she's not returned to that home to live. No, it became uninhabitable. I mean, it just, I would have to walk around that house looking out of every window. I made a habit of having to walk around the whole house. I got lights so that if somebody would come at night in the back so that those kinds of you know reflecting lights i, I had those put up I, you I, know I don't, you know again, yeah off, okay. all i was interested in is whether she had ever returned no the answer is no okay now when miss willis when your daughter left the home time period end of february beginning of march give or take 2021 do you know where she moved to no and i didn't want to know i intentionally did not want to know because i was not you know if somebody stuck a gun to my head and i could tell them i wasn't going to tell them anyway i would have made up something but i didn't want to know okay so would it be fair to say that if you didn't want to know you never visited her at the place that she moved to oh i never did never did. never did do you know how long she stayed at the first place that she went to after she left her house before she moved to a second place what i know and this is hearsay counsel is that my daughter has had to move something like four times do you know any potential no i don't know any place i was taken one time for christmas day i've only seen my daughter daughter, and this is very hard for me to say, but during the period my daughter left, I've only seen my daughter 13 times because I can't, and we've never seen each other more than maybe three hours because of, you know, the nightmare threats against uh, her and me. And I understand that from the perspective of being a father myself, I understand what that means. So I'm going to move away from that. I was just trying to get an idea of date wise. Okay. So let me try to get one more date. In 2023, when you were being interviewed by one of the gentlemen that wrote the book at the DA's office, and Mr. Wade came in. Can you give us, other than 2023, what the date would be? I'm sorry, I can't, Counsel. How about spring, summer? Any idea? I would guess spring or summer, but I can't. I'm sorry. And you've already indicated, at least to your recollection, that was the first time that you'd met Mr. Wade. Absolutely. Okay, not arguing with you about that. I want to go to Miss Willis's boyfriend that you referenced, okay? You met Miss Willis's boyfriend, as you've characterized it, when you came here in 2019. Correct. And you met him on one occasion, several occasions? Oh, uh, no, I saw him often. Oh, so you mean there was no secret that she was dating this man? Not from me. Not from you. He was a disc jockey of some kind. I think he had a government job during the day. I don't know what it was, but apparently he would do weddings and so forth and so on. He was a disc jockey, play music. So he had all his stuff was always in the way and I was always having to try to push it aside. You know, anyway. But Miss Willis, didn't, your daughter didn't keep him from you, correct? No. No, I mean, there was no doubt. He... I mean, my daughter and I lived in the same house. I mean, it, he came and went, you know. Right. Now, when did you learn that your daughter had a romantic personal relationship with Mr. Wade? Well, about seven weeks ago when it, as a matter of fact, I just found out when other folks found out. Okay. But, that is your daughter, as I understand it, never told you one time in the year of 2022 that she was dating Mr. Wade, correct? That's correct. And until recently, you didn't know from anyone, including your daughter, that she dated Mr. Wade, correct? That's correct. That is, whatever the relationship is between father and daughter, she can't kept that a secret from you, correct? Correct. That's all I need to know. Mr. Stockton. Good morning. Good morning, Counselor. When your daughter moved or left the house that she owned,
loaned. Did she say anything to you about having a large savings of cash? Oh, no. She maybe, excuse me, and I, Your Honor, I'm not trying to be racist, okay? But it's a black thing, okay? You know, I was trained, and most black folks, they hide cash or they keep cash. And no, I train. You always keep some cash because I've been places, and just because of the color of my skin, for example, I took a fellowship at Harvard when my daughter was just, if I might, Your Honor, for my, she was just, you know, maybe three years old. And I remember going to a restaurant in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I had a American Express credit card and maybe a visa, whatever. And I had a lot of what they call traveler's checks. I don't even know if they still have traveler's checks, but traveler's checks. And there was a sign said, you know, with the credit card, for whatever reasons, the man would not take my American Express credit card. So I pulled out my visa card and he wouldn't take my visa card. So then I pulled out my traveler's checks. He said, we don't take checks. Now this was, these were traveler's checks. This was money. I had a $10 bill. I'll never forget this as long as I live. And he said the bill for my wife at the time, Fonny's mother, Fonny and myself was like $9.95 and I had a $10 bill. It was all that. And I always remember that. But even before that, I've always kept cash, you know, and I've told my daughter, you keep six months worth of cash always. For example, I had three safes in my house. I put some of my clients stuff there too. Things I didn't want other lawyers to be, I mean, because you're always in a firm and I knew that there were special conditions. So some of my clients, things I would bring home, put them in the safe, but I've always kept safes. And as a matter of fact, I gave my daughter uh, her first cash box and told her always keep some cash. So is that a yes? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's all I got, Jeff. Mr. Gillen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, counsel. How are you? Just fine. Just a few questions following up. When you were talking about when you learned about Mr. Wade and your daughter, correct? Correct. Now, did your daughter tell you in around October of 2022 that she had gone on a Caribbean cruise with Mr. Wade to the uh, Bahamas? The answer is I knew that my daughter had gone, but I did not know who she went with or what the circumstances were. So I knew that she had gone out of town, but I didn't know with whom. I see. And did she tell you in November of 2022 that she had gone to Aruba and stayed at a Hyatt Regency resort there in Aruba for three days with Mr. Wade? Did she tell you the, that? The answer was, again, I knew she went out of town. I didn't even know where she went. I knew she was going out of town. She told me she was going out of town. I think she might have said she was going out of the country or something. She'd be gone. But other than that, that was all. Mm -hmm.